this is the best gaming device you've never heard of. Okay, so this is the Cyborg Gaming Keyboard from Azeron. And yes, you heard that right, keyboard. See, the keyboard, unlike the mouse, hasn't changed too much. Sure, we have RGB and an insane amount of mechanical switches for you to choose from and the ability to macro, but let's be honest, the way you use a keyboard while gaming really hasn't changed. And it isn't the most ergonomic solution either. Depending on the game, you may have to do some finger yoga to hit a key, or in my case, which I constantly do, fat finger the wrong key. For the most part, the usable area on a gaming keyboard tends to stick to the left hand side, and that's one of the problems Azeron is looking to fix. But that's not even the best part. So what is included in this pricey package? And it does get kind of expensive, especially compared to your typical keyboard from Logitech or Razer. But don't worry, we'll get to pricing. So obviously you get the Azeron Cyborg, a screwdriver with three different bits used to make ergonomic adjustments. Honestly, pretty good quality. I personally think it's better than my screwdriver from my iFixit kit. Some extra screws to make more precise adjustments to the shape. Thumbsticks of varying heights, which come with both concave and convex versions. They're super easy to swap out a nice little tug and then shove. Personally, I chose the shortest concave thumbstick which helps keep my thumb locked in place and its short length lets me make quick changes in direction in games like Warzone and Apex. And of course you get a USB cable. Sadly, it's mini USB. Guys, it's 2022, move on to USB-C. So the elephant in the room. Price. Well, it costs 165 euros after shipping and conversion rates, I ended up paying about 210 US dollars. Yes, it's more expensive than keyboards from brands like Logitech, Razer, or Ducky, but less expensive than building your own custom keyboard. My Tofu 60, when everything was said and done, cost me nearly $300. What you're paying for with the Azeron Cyborg is innovation, because let's be honest, most gaming products aren't innovative. Scuff has been coasting on that paddle patent for years. It's rare when a company introduces a new concept for gaming peripherals. Azeron is a small company. They don't have the manufacturing scale to produce something like this at a low price. In fact, most of the keyboard is 3D printed, with this metal backplate as a skeleton. Which brings me to build quality. Honestly, it's great. Better than expected. There's weight. There's heft. The clicks and buttons don't feel flimsy. Nothing feels like it could break at any moment. If I didn't tell you it was 3D printed, you probably wouldn't have even known. Honestly, I can only imagine what Azeron can produce in a couple years when they have better manufacturing capabilities and a manufacturer they can properly scale with. Ergonomics. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all the different possible ways you can adjust this thing, but let me put it like this. It doesn't matter what kind of hand you have. Long fingers, short fingers, big palm, little palm, sausage and bony fingers. You can adjust this thing to practically mold to your hand. Let me give you an example. A couple years ago, I injured my hand. Now using a gaming keyboard with even a wrist rest was kind of uncomfortable. I needed support, particularly in my fingers, not just the palm. Now while it did take a bunch of experimenting with different angles and heights, I was able to adjust each of these fingers on the keyboard to support my fingers. I can now play pretty much pain free. But this is where the cyborg gets even better. The joystick. I know what you're thinking. The Razer Tartar Sauce. It's the same thing. Yeah, see a lot of the joysticks on similar keyboards pads are closer to a d-pad than an actual joystick. They don't allow for analog input, but the cyborg does. Think of your average keyboard inputs on a scale going from 0 to 100. When you press W, the input is immediately set to 100. Let go and it goes to 0. But analog input, which you can find on your typical game controller thumbstick, lets you go anywhere between 0 and 100. So slightly push a joystick forward, you'll go to 20. Push a little bit more, you'll go to 60 push all the way and you'll go to 100. Essentially, analog input allows for precision while driving, flying, or moving, especially when using something like auto sprint. Now sadly, you can't ADAD like you can on a keyboard because there's still a ramp up with analog inputs, but you can counter that by using a shorter joystick and adjusting dead zones in the Azeron software. Speaking of which, there is onboard memory. And while you don't always need to have the software running, it is required to set up binds, macros, and to configure your joystick. Luckily, I haven't run into any issues with it and the software does seem pretty lightweight. It's not like Logitech G-Hub or the Razer suite of software that takes over your PC. Now, when it comes to button binds, you can choose between your standard keyboard keys, controller buttons, D-pads, and macros. You can also add on a secondary joystick to act as a D-pad. Now, because your thumbstick is adjustable just like the fingers on the keyboard, you can also adjust the angle of the thumbstick's middle point. I have mine set to negative 28 degrees, and you can see me pushing the thumbstick down the middle. If it was set to zero, you'd see the thumbstick is being pushed slightly off-center. You also aren't stuck with analog input 
output on the thumbstick, you can bind your Azeron thumbstick to use standard WASD if your game doesn't support mixed inputs. Heck, if you wanted to, let's say only your one hand is usable, set this thing up as a one-handed controller. You could set up the cyborg's buttons to mimic your left thumbstick and face buttons, and then have your cyborg's thumbstick mapped to your right thumbstick for aiming. Luckily, because of its onboard memory, you can also use this on console. Speaking of compatibility, I mentioned mixed inputs. I tested this across various games. Some, like Apex and Halo, allowed me to use an analog thumbstick combined with the mouse for aiming, with the only downside being the UI switching between the keyboard and controller UIs. But gameplay was smooth, no issues. Other games like 2042 and COD Vanguard, as well as Warzone, were finicky, some patches letting me use the same setup as Apex and Halo, and other patches needing me to map my cyborg's thumbstick to WASD inputs. Luckily, onboard memory made switching profiles a snap. Here's a list of games and my recommendations for thumbstick input. So is the Azeron Cyborg gaming keyboard worth it? Well, once you get everything set up and get past the somewhat steep learning curve, especially if all you've ever used are normal keyboards, honestly, I would say it's a little bit easier to transition from a controller to this, but past all that, I love using this thing. It's super comfortable, and I think for many people, it'll help open up their personal skill ceilings in games. I'm not saying everybody needs this, but if you got 100 bucks for Christmas, I recommend passing up on your average OEM rebranded gaming keyboard with generic red switches. Instead, take those $100, save up, and buy this thing instead, especially if you're moving from controller or play a variety of games or games that want you to use vehicles and be on foot at the same time, or even if you're like me and need something ergonomic. Anyway, if you made it this far in the video, think about dropping a sub and joining the generic community. It's supposed to be satirical. Everybody has a fam or an army. Do the usual YouTube things. I'd really appreciate you guys helping me feed the algorithm. Stick around. A video is going to pop up on screen that YouTube thinks you'll like. As for me, it's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.